So in this video I want to introduce the problem of mechanism design and to insist on its importance, especially in the context of uh, computer science. But before getting to the point, let me briefly celebrate the Nobel Prizes awarded to Roger Myerson, Eric Maskin, Leonid Howitz in 2007, and these awarded to Alvin Roth and Lloyd Chaplet in 2012 for their contributions to the theory of mechanism design. From a very abstract standpoint, algorithmic design can be regarded as the problem of of transforming inputs into outputs. Now a lot of the literature in computer science focuses on the design of this transformation with concerns like computation time or optimality of the outputs. However, there is another phrase that's very important in algorithmic design and that's getting more and more attention as algorithms are conquering the world, namely garbage in, garbage out. Indeed, in practice, quite often the inputs that we are given are not necessarily the inputs that we expect it to have. And if these inputs differ from what they are supposed to be, the outputs may be very bad. Thus, a question that should be of major importance to computer science is that of making sure that the inputs are quality inputs in some sense. Now, there are plenty of reasons why inputs in practice won't be as great as we would want them to be. Most notably is noise. There are plenty of research around this theme, like stochastic or robust programming. Another deficiency of inputs could be incompleteness, which may be dealt with by online learning or online optimization. But in this video, what I want to focus on is another third reason, namely the fact that the persons who provided us the inputs might not have revealed them truthfully. As a basic example of that, let us consider the problem of finding the largest value in an array. Evidently, this is a solved algorithmic problem. Just go through the list, keep in memory the largest value you found so far, and once the list has been entirely analyzed, the value in memory will be the largest of them all. However, in the context of auctions, where the values represent the bids of agents for some good, it is no longer clear that the highest value in the array corresponds to the bidder who desires the good the most, because bidders may typically bid below their true valuation so as to underpay for the good. This phenomenon also appears in politics under some voting systems, where some politicians of major parties typically openly ask the population to vote tactically rather than truthfully. As a result, the ballots may not represent the true preferences of the people, rather these inputs are subject to perturbations caused by the untruthfulness of the voters' strategies. This is where mechanism design steps in. The strategy of mechanism design is to enforce incentives for agents to behave as we would want them to. Roughly, this requirement corresponds to adding incentive constraints to the algorithms that we are designing. Mechanism design then aims at determining algorithms that satisfy such constraints, while keeping in mind that the thing that we are really interested in is always the quality of the outputs. Because the principles I've just given here are very general, applications of mechanism design span throughout plenty of areas. Evidently, when interactions between agents play a key role in determining outcomes, the tools of mechanism design are needed to make these interactions as productive as possible. Examples include market design, voting systems, kidney transplants, auctioning, sports competitions, scheduling, ad displays social networking, even peer reviewing, matching problems, probably many other areas I have not thought about yet. It should be noted that what we've discussed here is merely a brief introduction to a large area of research. In future videos, I want to present key ideas to mechanism design, such as the revelation principle, the VCG mechanism, optimal auctions, and some impossibility theorems.